the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever in the ages of all ages. Amen. Today's Gospel reading shows us very remarkable things, and it's really one of the most amazing Gospels that we ever could read in the four Gospels. This woman, usually they call her the, the sinner who washed Jesus' feet, but actually... I think the best term for her is the woman who loved much. Didn't, didn't Jesus say, whoever loves much is forgiven much? So we should remember this woman as the woman who loved much. And she basically exceeded everything that Simon the Pharisee could have done. Everything he actually not only could have, but should have done, she exceeded it in the way she behaved. And she's supposed to be an inspiration or an example to every single one of us. She represents the soul. Every one of us, every one of us who has either the eagerness or the desire to truly repent, to truly come back to God, it's the actions that will speak louder than the words. Her actions spoke, as we saw. She didn't need to say anything. She didn't need to say anything. So we need to remember her as such. The woman who loved much. And see where we are from this amazing woman. Like wh how we can pray that we can also be like her. In her repentance and in her love for the Lord. Therefore I tell you her sins which are many. So the Lord does not ignore the presence of the sin. He knows it's there. He sees it all the time. But he also sees something more important than that sin, which is that soul. So, please, for God's sake, don't let your sin stop you from coming to God. Whatever your sin is. As, as the, the fathers tell us, the church is not a museum for saints. It's a hospital for sinners. Every one of us has sins. But the beauty in the brightness or the genius of this woman is that she did not allow that sin to stop her. Her sins, which are many, were forgiven because she loved much. Now, we want to think about this loving much. What is this? Why did she love so much? What is it about this woman that made her think this way? That would make her barge into a stranger's house, and not just a stranger, like a Pharisee. Like this is like a high-ranked religious official at the time. She just like barges into the house. And surely there was a servant at the door or a butler or an usher, whoever that's going to let people in or out. How did she pass and get through all these people to get to Jesus? And you say, well, how could her sins not prevent her? She must have seen something or heard something that Simon either refused to acknowledge or refused to see. When, when she saw Jesus on the street... And she saw how he was with the children and the people and the sinners and this and that. She saw something. Maybe he looked at her for one second and it, that's all it took for his look of love and fatherhood to melt any pride, any self-righteousness, any self-justification, or any fear or shame to come to him boldly. St. Paul tells you that. Come boldly to the throne. St. Ambrose says, if you can't get to Jesus' head, Put your head at his feet. Just put your head to his feet. What do you think Jesus is going to do? He washed the feet. He continually washes the feet. So imagine if someone goes to Jesus straight to his feet. What will he do? He will instantly raise that person up. As this picture depicts perfectly. She went to his feet. He put his hand on her head. To heal her. To bring her up. The humble he will exalt. Guaranteed. This woman is truly a hero. And she reminds us by her actions of the verse that says, we love him because he first loved us. She saw something in Jesus first that led her to do what she did, that gave her the courage to do what she did. When you compare her to Simon the Pharisee, who should have known better, and actually before I go on to say he should have known better, the risk of every one of us falling into Simon the Pharisee's shoes and being another Simon the Pharisee. Every one of us could be Simon the Pharisee. It takes a lot of determination 
and a serious soul that is seriously seeking salvation to do what this woman did. Takes a lot of that. Simon the Pharisee represents the soul that has no depth. Basically, it has an appearance of religion, but that's it. It's like he basically invited Jesus into his house, but not into his heart. He didn't invite Jesus into his heart. He probably spent a lot of money to have this big feast that day, and this big banquet, and I'm sure people were jealous of him uh, while he's got the master of the, of the house, or the, the, the master teacher coming to his house. He must have been the envy or the talk of the town that day. And yet it stopped there. It was an appearance. That's all it looked like. It wasn't more than that. Let's not fall in that. Let's not just worship the Lord in appearance. It's not just what we wear. It's not the clothing. It's not the crosses. It's not the, any physical sign. It always has to go back to the heart of the matter, the spirit and the truth of the matter. Where is my heart at the matter? Always. So, well, I don't have the heart for this. I'd like to, but I don't. Ask for it. Be honest about it. An honest prayer is the most effective prayer. We can pray a lot of prayers. We can stand here for another few minutes or hour or whatever and pray our liturgy and chant our chants and sing our sing songs and repeat our rep responses. But if it's not from the heart, what have we gained? We haven't gained anything. This woman is a beautiful, beautiful example for me and for you. She represents that serious soul that's seeking. The Lord even said, this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since she came in. She hasn't ceased. She hasn't stopped. So take that from her. Don't cease. St. Paul says, pray without ceasing. This woman kissed his feet without ceasing. Why stop? Why stop? What is her secret? You wonderful woman, what is your secret? Her secret is she acknowledged what God has done. She does not forget what God has done. Human nature is very good at forgetting. Human nature is very good at forgetting what God did yesterday or the day before. And yet, we need to remember daily. We should daily remember. Daily remind yourself. This morning when you woke up, remind yourself what God did for you yesterday and the day before. Isaiah says, till gray hairs, he will uphold you. He will raise you up. You know, I have a personal example to give you, me personally. Six years ago, I had a very serious surgery on my leg. It was almost amputated. And it didn't get amputated. And the doctor said, you know, even if it's not amputated, he's not going to walk normally ever again. Some of you were there back then. We were praying in Lachine at the time. Every morning, it's a remembrance of God's love for me and how He takes care of me and how He took care of me and how He, he will take care of me, as He will you. Every morning when I get out of bed and I put my feet on the ground and I can stand up and I can pray and start my day and walk without someone assisting me, without a walker, I say, I remember, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for what you've done for me. We need to do that, every one of us. Every one of us has to be like that. Psalm 103 is a great way to remember. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless His holy name. All that is within me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Don't forget all His benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. Don't forget. Don't forget. Remember. Don't let the world and the hustle and the bustle cause you to forget what God has done and is doing for you and will do for you. Don't let the devil do that. Don't let him win on you on that one. Never. No matter what he tries to fill your mind with, they'll know, but I remember. I know whom I have believed in, as St. Paul says to St. Timothy before he's martyred. Don't forget. Remind yourself. Psalm 51 is full of that. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. When David says that, he's basically encouraging us to think, my sin is always before me. Keep that cross in front of you. Not your sin. It's not about walking around with your head down ashamed because 
yesterday, a year ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you did that very shameful sin or thing. No. It's keep in front of you the cross that took your sin, took your shame, and turned it into a blessing. Took your curse, turned it into a blessing for you. That's what you need to do. That's what he means here. It's not that walk around, I remember that I am a sinner, I am a sinner, I am a sinner. No. Remember that despite of your sin, it's converted to a blessing for you if you repent. That's why when we encourage the congregation and the church teaches us as one of its seven mysteries is the mystery of repentance and confession. It's not to bring the congregation to sit down with Abuna and start embarrassing themselves in front of Abuna for what they have said or done in their life. No. It's basically a celebration and a guarantee and an assurance that regardless of whatever sin you could have done or did, as soon as you say, Lord, forgive me from your heart, He tells you, I forgive you. Your sins, although many, are forgiven because you loved much. But do we love much? How do we love much? By not forgetting. We love much by remembering. We love much by acknowledging what God has done for us. We have to remember, the cross cannot simply be a religious symbol for us. It could be a religious symbol for the rest of the planet. No problem. But for you, the Christian, it has to be more than a religious symbol. It cannot be just something you hang up in your rooms or in your car or you tattoo it on your arm or chest. Cannot. It's way more than that. It's a daily, every moment reminder of how greatly loved you are and how, no matter how many your sins are, it took Jesus and His cross to wipe it out. You can say only Jesus and His cross, yes, but at the same time, wow, all that, yes. So it's both. It just takes Jesus, nothing else. But it's a lot that He had to do. He emptied Himself for us, for me and for you. So pray these psalms and memorize them. The church puts Psalm 51 for us in the introduction in every hour of our Agbeya to help us, to remind us to thank God and to remember David's true repentance when he sins, that we may appropriate that same true repentance. Notice how we read Jonah's story today in the Synaxarian? What does it say? More than once it says, and when God saw their true repentance... When God saw their true, the word true before repentance, it's not just, I repent. It's true repentance. Yeah, but what if I truly repent today, but tomorrow I fall into sin again? Sufficient for today is its own trouble. Are you serious about it today? Good. Stick with today. Tomorrow is a new day, a new struggle. And God will send you His messages and His encouragement in various ways. One person, one of my sons in confession, was confessing something a struggle that he has been going through for a long time. And just recently, his most recent confession, he came to me and said, there was this particular day, just a few days before I come see you tonight, Abuna, that I was going to fall for sure, back into my temptation, back into my sin. And out of nowhere, I look at my WhatsApp messages that day, I get a message from someone that never messages me anything. Never. And for some reason, that particularly day, particular day, he sent me a verse. I was wondering, why, does this, why is he writing me and a verse? So he looks at the verse. It's when St. Paul says to St. Timothy, O man of God, flee. O man of God, flee. He read it. He felt like it was like a breath of fresh air or a cup of cold water to someone dying of thirst. That verse came to him just in the nick of time, and he was able to overcome yet another day. It's one day at a time. But be honest every day. Let today, may, your, may today be your most honest day yet. And tomorrow may be more honest than today. And so on. One day at a time. Restore to me when you don't feel it at all. You feel down and sad and, and distraught and depressed. Again, Psalm 51. Same Psalm so far. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me by your generous spirit. God's spirit is a generous spirit. He's not going to uphold you grudgingly. He's not going to uphold you because He has to. It's because He loves you and He lavishes His love upon you generously. Your God is a generous God. As He showed this woman that came to Him boldly, with all her heart, seriously. She took it seriously. It wasn't a joke. 
It wasn't a joke. So, again, Psalm 51, verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. God will never turn you away, especially when you're coming sincerely. When you come sincerely from all your heart, just as this woman did, He will never tell you, no, no, sorry, I can't forgive this one. He will never do that. He guarantees it with His blood. He will never do that to you. Ever. He says so. Whoever comes to me, I'll by no means cast out. This woman should be a daily reminder of a true, serious Christian. A truly serious Christian that no matter how far she advances in her relationship with Jesus, she goes back to his feet every morning, every night, saying, Lord, forgive me once again. Grant me the true repentance once again. Those who have been forgiven much, love much. That's why if you want, if you want to gauge your repentance, you yourself and you, just you, nobody else, if you want to gauge your Christian walk, see how you are when it comes to others' mistakes. If you are merciful with others, then chances are you have been forgiven much. When you have a lot of love for others, chances are you also have been forgiven much. You also have acknowledged what God has done for you. But when you are harsh, unmerciful, brutal, violent, boasters, blasphemers, as St. Paul said to Timothy in chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3, go read it, the first five verses. He says at the end of days, perilous times will come, people will be tick, 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 and he lists really rough things. Brutal, boasters, despisers of men, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. Gauge your repentance just by how you are with others. Acknowledge and don't forget God's love for you. Reciprocate it to Him. That you also may reciprocate it to others. That you may be Christ to others to help them come to Him also. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.